battle-weary Diablo 4 and Path of Exile fans may finally have some common ground. Last Epoch has hacked and slashed its way out of a five-year early access period, and the 1.0 release of this ARPG strikes a fine balance between the approachability and high-speed action of Diablo 4 and the absurdly complex character build diversity of Path of Exile. That's thanks to a skill system that's both easy to understand and offers tons of room to fine-tune your character however you'd like. Last Epoch's roughly 20-hour campaign, however, only manages to start fresh before devolving into a derivative mess, though that's somewhat forgivable when it's basically just there to get you to its engaging endgame anyway. If you can stomach that as well as some technical clunkiness, the climb to level 100 is lined with mountains of great loot and fun fights that made it well worth sinking dozens of hours into. Once you've made your pick from one of five standard characters, you're off to the visually appetizing high fantasy world of Etera, which is chronically ravaged by swarms of zombies, sword-wielding birds, and giant crabs. If you saw the name Last Epoch and immediately thought of the time-warping epoch from Chrono Trigger, just wait until you meet Elder Gaspar at the end of time. You've woken up. That's good. I'm sure you have many questions. No, you're not experiencing deja vu. Last Epoch borrows liberally from Chrono Trigger both in its story and in its setting, using that inspiration to provide a mostly serviceable explanation for all the action happening on screen. To make it clear just how deep the parallels run, it's established early on in the campaign that Etera will inevitably end up destroyed in the future. And the duration of the main quest that follows is spent running back and forth between each of Last Epoch's five suspiciously familiar eras to secure this game's time-traveling epoch and prevent that from ever happening. On the precipice of a broken world, there is hope. But unlike the masterful story that this is clearly based on, at no point does Last Epoch ever establish why anyone involved should care. I might have a mutually beneficial arrangement. At least, there are a few fantastic boss fights along the way, like the Kraken-esque Lagon and the Towering Temple Guardian, to pronounce the former as best as I could. But for a game that puts its story in such direct comparison with an all-time classic, it doesn't do a lot to try to live up to it. After all, this world was gone. If they devoted themselves to despair, would it welcome them? Last Epoch at least sets itself apart mechanically by introducing several new layers to its otherwise conventional systems, like Ward, which acts as a regenerating shield on top of your health pool, or your mana pool being able to dip into the negatives. I did miss having a dodge roll, but the action still feels deeper and more methodical than Diablo without overcomplicating that simple yet satisfying ARPG loop. It's slightly off-putting that the five pre-made characters always look and sound exactly the same, but once you make it past the opening levels, the staggering degree of customizable depth and Last Epoch's skill system begins to blossom in a way I haven't seen in any other ARPG. Even if you pick the same class multiple times, it's great that you can specialize into one of three subclasses, which vastly alter the way they operate. For instance, I specialized my Acolyte into a Necromancer, a predictably minion-focused subclass that has tons of extra options to fundamentally change how your undead minions work. My favorite Necromancer-specific spell let me summon swarms of wraiths, which do tons of damage on their own, but instantly become even more dangerous thanks to a damage buff provided by the Acolyte's Universal Transplant skill, which could teleport me to my cursor's location while empowering my entire army. Likewise, my friend played a rogue, eventually specializing her into a marksman, which focuses exclusively on twitchy mobility and tactfully placed bow and arrow attacks. When I finally got the chance to take that class for a spin, it felt like we had been playing two different games the whole time. That was close. Gear is also way more exciting in Last Epoch thanks to its excellent crafting system, which lets you use glyphs and scrolls to fundamentally rebuild entire pieces of equipment. I love the fact I might randomly find items that introduce entirely new mechanics, too. For instance, a belt that makes my necromancer unleash a wave of frost every time I use a healing potion, freezing every monster nearby and leaving them as easy pickings for my army of minions. Instead of hunting for gear to support a specific build, it often works the other way around. I'll be inspired to retool my character's skill specializations and passives if I find a particularly interesting armament, and the flexibility to easily respec encourages creativity at all times. Ah! 
Last Epoch's main endgame activities are called Monoliths of Fate, which feel at least a little inspired by roguelikes such as Hades. Each of the ten monoliths has a different theme and possible rewards, including powerful blessings, which are global buffs affecting things like loot drop rates, experience gains, or even character stats like health and mana. When activating a monolith, you are sent to a procedurally generated series of islands called Echoes, surrounding a central timeline. A single Echo occupies a turn on the timeline's game board, and the objective is to eventually survive enough turns and amass enough stability to complete the timeline and unlock the monolith's blessing thereby granting access to the next Monolith of Fate. That may sound overly complicated, but this system works well because each Echo contains different modifiers that can up the difficulty or provide better rewards of a certain type for several turns, shaking things up. The further out you go, the greater both the risk and the reward, keeping things interesting even when you've invented what normally feels like an overpowered character build. For what it's worth, Last Epoch also has a handful of more traditional dungeons, plus an arena that lets you take on waves of foes. But I was significantly less interested in any of those excursions, all of which felt like an afterthought compared to the monoliths. It sucks, for example, that I needed to scour the world for single-use keys to get into any of them, which are needlessly tough to find. At least each of the three or four dungeons I encountered had its own unique mechanic, like the Temporal Sanctum, which had me switching between two parallel timelines at the click of a button, a la that one infamous mission from Titanfall 2. But each trick is so short-lived that it ultimately feels like a gimmick in the grand scheme of Last Epoch's laundry list of more interesting expeditions. Last Epoch is rarely, if ever, punishing. Outside of dungeons and monoliths, where the former locks you out and the latter sets your progress back a little, dying is only a minor inconvenience since you'll immediately spawn right next to your place of death, with no loss of XP and no corpse run needed to grab any lost loot. That can make it feel too easy in earlier sections, especially if your character can chew through enemies like tissue paper. But this hardly detracted from my enjoyment of the endgame, since Last Epoch's later boss fights are satisfyingly balanced, throwing unexpected curveballs that compelled me to adjust my strategy more than once. However, the town portal system can feel half-baked in some often bewildering ways. For instance, returning to town essentially resets the entire map. Meaning, if you defeat a boss and then return to town to sell your loot, using the portal to return to the spot you left will spawn that boss right back where you just defeated it. This disjointed portal system is handled so clunkily, in online multiplayer in particular, that it can often take seconds or even minutes to travel between locations, and more than once, portals broke entirely. The experience was bad enough that I spent most of my 36 hours in offline mode whenever I wasn't playing my alt character with my friend who played the rogue. That pretty much fully prevented me from having to deal with any of Last Epoch's microtransaction systems, which are grayed out in offline mode. But as I incidentally discovered firsthand, these can all be easily ignored without issue, as the things you are able to buy are purely cosmetic. Last Epoch is an impressive, time-bending action RPG that combines rich customization with modern action. In the mechanical sense, it serves as an important stepping stone between Diablo and Path of Exile. But even without making direct comparisons, it competently stands on its own merits thanks to a flurry of unique, intertwining systems and a strong endgame that make it difficult to resist pouring an entire weekend into its endless loops. Just don't let its poorly told story or the handful of bugs that have yet to be squashed discourage you from seeing this adventure through to the end of time. For more, check out our reviews of Helldivers 2 or Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. And for everything else, stick with IGN.